Last Friday, Sarah told me she was hosting a small, casual get-together. Just a few co-workers, nothing crazy, she said, her voice light and easy, like it was no big deal. She practically pushed me out of the house, suggesting I go to my friend Mike's for the night. Normally, I wouldn't think twice, but this time something felt off. It wasn't anything I could put my finger on, just a strange feeling in the pit of my stomach. So I decided to cut my night short and head back home. I figured I'd pop in, maybe grab something I forgot, just to see how the quiet gathering was going. But as I turned onto our street, something didn't sit right. Cars lined the block, way too many for a small group of friends. When I walked in, the music hit me first. It wasn't soft background music for casual conversation. It was loud, pulsing, like a full-on party. I pushed open the door, and the scene inside was not what Sarah had promised. Strangers were everywhere, drinks in hand, laughing, talking, filling every corner of our house. This was no small gathering. And then I saw her, standing near the kitchen with some guy I'd never seen before, tall, athletic, leaning in way too close, hand resting on her back. She didn't notice me right away, too busy laughing at whatever he was saying. But the way she looked at him, the way her body leaned into his touch, my gut twisted. This wasn't right. She promised it would be just a quiet gathering with friends, but when I showed up at the party unexpectedly, I realized how wrong I had been. I stood there for a moment, frozen in the doorway, taking it all in. Sarah hadn't noticed me yet, too wrapped up in her conversation with this guy, practically glued to him. My mind raced, trying to catch up with what I was seeing, the laughter, the way she tilted her head toward him, letting him rest his hand on her back like it belonged there. It was more intimate than I had ever seen her with a friend. My gut turned, and I felt this tightness in my chest, like I was being suffocated. Was I imagining things? Overreacting? I wasn't the jealous type, but this was different. Something was off, and I wasn't just going to stand by and watch. I started moving toward them, threading my way through the crowd of strangers cluttering our house. As I got closer, she finally spotted me. Her eyes widened just for a second, and her smile faltered, but then almost instantly, she recovered. The fake grin was back on her face like nothing had happened. Hey, you're back early, she chirped, pulling away from the guy a little too quickly, trying to act casual. But I saw the flicker of panic in her eyes, just for a split second. The guy, whoever the hell he was, didn't even flinch. He just stood there, still smirking, clearly unfazed by the sudden tension. It was as if he knew something I didn't. Yeah, I said, my voice tight, eyes fixed on Sarah. Thought I'd check out this quiet gathering you were talking about. Her smile wavered, but she held it. Oh, you know how it is, she said, her voice just a little too cheerful. People from work brought a few friends. It wasn't supposed to get this big. I turned my attention to the guy, my blood boiling. And this is? Sarah hesitated just for a heartbeat. Oh, this is Matt. He's a friend from work. Just a friend from work, huh? But the way they had been standing, the way she had looked at him, it didn't feel like just friends. Something was seriously wrong. I couldn't tear my eyes off the two of them. Matt didn't look nervous. If anything, he looked comfortable, too comfortable, like he belonged here in my house, standing this close to my wife. That sick feeling in my gut tightened. I wasn't buying her explanation, not this time. A friend from work, I repeated, my voice sharp, testing the words. I looked directly at Matt, my fists clenching at my sides. You seem pretty cozy for a work friend. Matt raised an eyebrow, clearly not intimidated. He sipped his drink, smirking. We all get along well at the office, he said casually, like this was the most natural thing in the world. Sarah shifted nervously beside him, shooting him a quick glance like she was silently willing him to shut up. But it was too late. My mind was already racing, piecing things together. I noticed the way she stepped slightly in front of him, like she was trying to create a barrier between us. Yeah, I said, locking eyes with her. Seems like you've been getting along really well. Her face tightened. Dave, stop. 
You're being ridiculous. It's just a party, okay? Nothing's going on. She laughed, but it sounded forced, hollow. I took a step closer, lowering my voice so only she could hear. If nothing's going on, why do you look so nervous? She blinked, caught off guard. For the first time, her composure cracked. She bit her lip, glancing away, and I could feel it, the truth was bubbling right beneath the surface, ready to spill out. And then it happened. She glanced back at Matt, just for a second, but it was enough. The look they shared wasn't casual, it wasn't friendly, it was full of something else, something I hadn't seen between us in a long time. That's when I knew this wasn't just in my head. Something was going on. Sarah saw the shift in my expression, the way everything clicked in my head. Her posture changed, more defensive now, like she knew the walls were closing in. She opened her mouth, probably to spit out more excuses, but I wasn't about to let her off that easy. How long, Sarah? I asked, my voice sharp. Her eyes widened, panic flickering in them for just a second. I was done playing nice. How long has this been going on? Matt stayed quiet, the smug grin gone, but he didn't move. He just watched. I could feel the tension between them, thick and undeniable. It was like he was waiting for her to handle this, to lie, probably. I don't know what you're talking about, she said, her voice shaky. You're overreacting. Seriously, Dave, there's nothing, don't, I cut her off, my voice rising. I saw the way you looked at him. Don't stand there and tell me it's nothing. She opened her mouth again, but no words came out. Her eyes flicked back to Matt, and I saw it, guilt, plain as day. It wasn't just a look. This was real. I stepped in closer, glaring at her. How long? I demanded, my fists clenching. You think I'm stupid? How long have you been sneaking around? Sarah's face paled. The mask of casualness finally crumbled. She looked trapped, cornered, and for the first time that night, she didn't have a quick answer. There was no easy way out. Finally, she exhaled a long, shaky breath, her voice dropping to a whisper. A few months. My heart plummeted. Months? I repeated, almost in disbelief. You've been doing this behind my back for months? She didn't answer, just looked away. The weight of her silence was enough to confirm everything. The room seemed to close in on me, the air thick and suffocating. I could hear the muffled sounds of the party continuing around us, but it was all distant now, like I was trapped in some surreal nightmare. The reality of her words, months, hit me like a sledgehammer. I turned to Matt, who had been watching this unfold without a word, still calm, still acting like this wasn't a big deal. I couldn't take it anymore. You knew she was married. You knew about me, I snarled, stepping closer. And you didn't give a damn, did you? He shrugged, his tone infuriatingly casual. Look, man, it's not that serious. Sarah and I were just having some fun, nothing more than that. Fun. That word ignited something inside me. My blood boiled at the sheer disrespect, not just from him, but from her. This wasn't some casual fling. This was my marriage, my life, and to them, it was just a game. I turned back to Sarah, my voice shaking with anger. This, this is what you threw everything away for. A few months of fun? You betrayed me for this? She flinched, but the guilt didn't come fast enough. She was still trying to hold on, still trying to make excuses. Dave, I didn't mean for it to go this far, she stammered. It wasn't supposed to be serious. I didn't want to hurt you. Too late, I thought. The damage was done, and there was no going back. Sarah's weak excuses only fueled the fire burning inside me. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It wasn't supposed to be serious? The way she was twisting this, trying to downplay months of betrayal, was infuriating. She hadn't just broken my trust, she had shattered it. And now, standing here in front of me, she couldn't even own up to the destruction she'd caused. 
It wasn't serious? I spat, my voice rising. You call cheating on me for months with this guy not serious? You've been lying to my face, acting like everything's fine, and now you expect me to just, what, shrug it off? Her face tightened, and for a moment, I saw something, maybe guilt, maybe fear, but just as quickly, it disappeared, replaced by frustration. Dave, I didn't want it to happen like this, she said, almost pleading. But you've been so distant, so caught up in your own world. I felt invisible. My stomach turned at the manipulation in her words. She was trying to twist the narrative, making it seem like I was to blame, like her cheating was somehow my fault. So what? I shot back. You felt neglected, and instead of talking to me, you decided to find comfort in someone else? That's your excuse? She didn't answer. The silence between us was deafening, heavy with the weight of everything left unsaid. I glanced at Matt again, still standing there, still smug. He wasn't the real issue here, though. It was her. She had let this happen. She had made the choice to lie, to betray me. And now she stood there, trying to justify it like it was something inevitable. You know what, Sarah? I said, my voice cold, the last bit of patience in me gone. I don't care about your excuses anymore. You made your choice. You didn't just cheat on me, you destroyed everything we had. Her eyes flickered with something, maybe regret, maybe realization, but it was too late. The damage was done. Sarah's face hardened at my words, but I could see the cracks forming in her mask. For a moment, it looked like she might break down, like the weight of what she'd done was finally crashing down on her. But instead, she crossed her arms, her voice sharpening. You think this is all on me? That I'm the only one who ruined everything? Her sudden defensiveness took me off guard. I'd expected regret, maybe even an apology. But this, she was still trying to shift the blame, and I wasn't having it. Oh, I'm sorry, I said, my voice dripping with sarcasm. You're right. I'm the one who let some random guy put his hands all over me in our house, at our party. Totally my fault. She glared at me, frustration flaring in her eyes. You think I wanted it to get to this point? Do you even hear yourself? We've been falling apart for years, Dave. I tried talking to you, tried to make you see how distant you've been, but you didn't care. I was lonely. Lonely. That word echoed in my mind, twisting the knife deeper. I wasn't going to let her play the victim, not after everything she'd done. Lonely? And what, Matt here was your solution. You didn't try to fix anything. You went behind my back. If you were so miserable, you could have left. But instead, you chose to cheat. That's on you, not me. Matt stood silent, his smug grin now long gone. He wasn't part of the conversation anymore. This was between me and her. I didn't want to hurt you, she said, her voice trembling now, but I could hear the weakness behind her words. But I was hurting too. You stopped caring a long time ago. I felt the sting of her words, but there was no way she could twist this in her favor. No, Sarah, you're not a victim. You had a choice, and you made it. And now you're trying to justify it like it's my fault. But this, this is all on you. For the first time, she didn't have a comeback. The reality of what she'd done seemed to finally hit her. But it was too late. The silence between us hung heavy, and for the first time, I saw Sarah falter. The defiance, the blame shifting, it all seemed to drain out of her as she stood there, staring at the floor. Her arms uncrossed, and her posture shifted, no longer defensive, but lost, like she had no idea what to say next. And honestly, neither did I. But the anger still burned in me. It wasn't enough for her to just stand there, looking regretful. Now that everything was out in the open, I needed her to understand what she'd done. To face the damage she'd caused. To acknowledge that she was the one who ruined everything, not me. You don't get it, do you? I said, breaking the silence. My voice was low, shaking with the weight of everything I hadn't said. 
You didn't just cheat on me, Sarah. You broke me. You made me question everything, every moment, every word, every memory. And you stand there acting like it was inevitable, like I'm the one who pushed you into this. She looked up at me then, her eyes filled with something I couldn't quite place, regret, guilt, maybe even fear. But I wasn't sure if it was fear of losing me, or fear of facing the consequences. I didn't mean for it to get this far, she whispered. I didn't plan any of this. I was just, I don't know. I was lost. And Matt, he was there. I scoffed, shaking my head in disbelief. He was there. That's all it took? Some guy showing up and giving you attention? You really expect me to believe that, that it just happened? She opened her mouth to speak, but nothing came out. She knew there were no more excuses, no more lies she could tell. And for the first time that night, she seemed to realize the weight of what she'd done. But it was too late. I took a step back, the finality of it all hitting me. I'm done, I said, my voice quieter now, but firm. You can keep your excuses, your guilt, whatever. I'm done with this. I turned to leave, and this time, she didn't stop me. As I reached the door, Sarah's voice broke through the wall of silence. Dave, wait, she called, her voice desperate now, cracking like the mask she'd been holding onto for so long. But there was nothing left to say. I paused at the door, not because I wanted to, but because some part of me needed closure. I needed her to feel the weight of this moment. To understand that this wasn't something she could just walk back from with a few sorry excuses and a sad look. You don't get to do this, I said, my back still turned to her. You don't get to stand there after months of lying and suddenly act like it matters to you now that I'm leaving. You made your choice, Sarah. And now you have to live with it. Her voice cracked again, weaker this time. I know, I know I messed up, but we can fix this. We can, I turned around, cutting her off with a look. Fix this? You think there's anything left to fix? I shook my head, disbelief and sorrow mixing in my chest. You destroyed everything, Sarah. You took what we had and threw it away like it meant nothing. And now, now you want to fix it? Tears welled up in her eyes, but I couldn't feel sympathy, not anymore. I'd been wrecked by her betrayal, torn apart by the lies, the months of pretending everything was fine while she laughed and flirted with another man. I don't know what you can do, I continued, my voice cold and final. But this? Us? It's done. Her tears finally spilled over, but the sight of them didn't move me. It was too little, too late. I had given her everything, and she had crushed it underfoot. Without another word, I turned and walked out the door, leaving Sarah, her tears, and the wreckage of our life behind me. I walked out into the night, the cold air hitting me like a slap. Every step away from that house felt like I was pulling myself out of quicksand, like I was finally free of the suffocating weight that had been pressing down on me for months. The sound of the party faded behind me, along with the life I thought I had. But as much as I wanted to feel relief, all I felt was emptiness. The anger, the betrayal, it had burned through me like wildfire, leaving nothing but ashes behind. I had lost Sarah long before tonight, and maybe deep down, I'd known it. But seeing it unfold, hearing her excuses, watching her stand there with that guy, Matt, it ripped me apart in ways I hadn't been prepared for. I got into my car and just sat there for a moment, my hands gripping the steering wheel. The future I had imagined, everything we had planned, every promise we'd made, was gone. And now, all that was left was the hollow realization that I didn't know what came next. But then, as I stared out at the dark, empty street, something else hit me, a strange, quiet sense of clarity. Sarah had made her choice, and I had made mine. She had chosen lies, betrayal, and fun. I had chosen to walk away. And for the first time in months, I felt like I was taking control of my life again. I took a deep breath and started the engine, the hum of the car filling the silence as I pulled away from the curb. I didn't look back. There was nothing left for me there. I knew it was going to take time to heal, to rebuild, but I also knew one thing for certain, I deserved better.
and from now on, I wouldn't settle for anything less.